Hello there and uh, good evening ladies and gentlemen, this is L24 Midnight News and coming up next in our news programme. Algerian Foreign Minister Mr. Ramadan Mamra stated that Algeria would continue its role as a driving force for peace and stability in the African continent. Chinese President Xi Jinping is in Saudi Arabia for a three-day visit that is likely to focus on energy ties as Riyadh looks to expand its global alliances. Also coming up next in our news program, in Russia-Ukraine conflict, Vladimir Putin hints at a long conflict and says risk of nuclear war is on the rise. Police in Germany have arrested 25 people suspected of belonging to a far-right terror cell plotting to overthrow the government and attack parliament. Welcome again, I'm your host Abdul Rahim Kashour and those were today's top stories. First, Algerian President Mr. Abdel Majid Tabun reaffirmed his country's support for the African efforts to achieve national reconciliation in Libya. The Algerian president, via phone conversation with the president of the Republic of Congo, Brazzaville, Denis Sasso, affirmed Algeria's support and standing alongside the representative of the African Union for National Reconciliation in Libya, expressing his hope that the noble endeavor will be achieved and appropriate climate for holding elections will be created. African gather, Africans gather at the 9th Annual High-Level Conference on the promotion of peace and security in the African continent, determined to find effective mechanisms that enhance their aspirations to build a united continent and activate their vital presence in policymaking at the international level. Hussein Works of the 9th High-Level Conference on Peace and Security in Africa began on Wednesday in Iran under the theme Support for New African Members of the Security Council of the United Nations in Dealing with Issues of Peace and Security in the African Continent. This conference opened under the chairmanship of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Nigeria and President of the High-Level Conference on Peace and Security in Africa for this month of December, Geoffrey Onima and in the presence of the Minister of Foreign Affairs and the national community abroad, Ramdan Mamra, who emphasized Algeria's important role in preserving peace and security in the African continent. Algeria will spare no effort in upholding and promoting the principles of our organization while carrying the continental mandate that the African Union has interested upon my country, Algeria, when endorsing its candidature for a non-permanent seat in the Security Council. The high-level conference aims to strengthen cooperation and coordination between the African Council for Peace and Security and the Security Council of the United Nations in carrying out their tasks. The holding of this edition is intended to be an extension of previous editions initiated by Algeria as part of its firm and constant commitment to support the action of the organization in the fields of peace and security and its tireless efforts to promote common African action. We firmly believe that Africa, which has long been calling for the reform of the UN Security Council to end up the historical injustice inflicted on it, for nearly eight decades now, is entitled to make its case over and over while emphasizing the urgent need for an inclusive and balanced multilateralism to address global challenges in an effective and efficient manner. These objectives constitute the main axis that Algeria tends to strongly defend on behalf of the African countries through its candidacy for membership of the United Nations Security Council for the period 2024-2025 in coordination with its African brothers and in the light of its full commitment to the objectives and the principles of the African Union Constitutive Charter and the Charter of the United Nations. 
The Algerian Foreign Minister, Mr. Mtala Mamre, received the Assistant Secretary General of the United Nations in charge of peace operations, Jean-Pierre Lacroix. On the sidelines of the ninth high-level summit on peace and security in Africa and Iran, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Ramtala Mamre, held a bilateral meeting with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, whose country holds the rotating presidency of the Peace and Security Council of the African Union. The two ministers expressed that satisfaction for the great progress witnessed in the summit in order to enable the African group to contribute effectively to decision-making within the UN Security Council. Algeria is one of the biggest countries in the continent and which has a big role to play, such as the one played by Algeria in Mali, for example. Algeria has a significant and a respected position in the continent, which makes it very well situated to play the role of a mediator and for peace in Africa. African ministers in charge of the startup sector adopted in Algeria during the first African startup conference. The first continental roadmap constituting high-level inter-African cooperation. The Algerian Minister of it's Knowledge, it's Economy, it's Startups it's and Microenterprises, Yassine Al Mahdi Walid, affirmed that the African roadmap for cooperation in the field of startups allows companies to access African markets and access innovative financing mechanisms in the future, noting that documents will be presented to the African Union for approval. The Algerian Prime Minister declared, or rather, the Prime Minister declared the launch of a new digital government portal that includes more than 300 digitized public services affiliated to 29 ministerial sectors that would allow citizens to access to all public services from their location. Mr. Ayman bin Abdurrahman said, this is a milestone in advancing that path of digitization and modernization of public administration and bringing it closer to the citizens. The government has put among its top priorities the simplification of administrative procedures, which allows the development and the diversification of the national economy, thanks to the encouragement of national and foreign economic operators, who are encouraged to invest in Algeria after providing the necessary facilities, specifically the digitization of procedures. This also allows for an improvement in our country's ranking in international rankings. Still in the African continent, the, the Sahrawi president of the Secretary General of Polisario France, Brahim Ghali, praised on Wednesday the righteous position of Tanzania, which defends the right of Sahrawi people to exercise their self-determination and complete national sovereignty, calling for liquidation of the last manifestations of colonialism in Africa. This came during a speech he delivered to the participants in the 10th Conference of Tanzania Revolutionary Party, which President Ghali is attending in Tanzania, accompanied by a high-ranking Sahrawi delegation. I address in the name of the people and the government of the Sahrawi Republic and in the name of the Polisario Front to Her Excellency, Mrs. Samia Salouh and to the leadership of the Tanzanian Revolution Party, its administrations and its affiliates and throw them to all the Tanzanian people with all thanks, gratitude and appreciation for Tanzania's principled and respectful position which defends the right of our people, the constant practice of self-determination and the completion of sovereignty over its entire independent homeland and thus the liquidation of the last manifestations of colonialism from our African continent. It is a firm principled position adopted by Tanzania firmly and continuously since the outbreak of the Sahrawi national liberation struggle against colonialism. Algerian civil society organizations and Algerian political parties expressed their absolute solidarity and support 
for the legitimate demands of the Sahara people for self-determination and independence. This came during the 72nd anniversary of the Special Declaration of Algeria, which grants independence to the colonized peoples, including the Sahara people. <laughs> Algerian civil society and different organizations and associations. It's an honor for us, Sahrawi people. This initiative confirms the support and intimate relationship between the Algerians and Sahrawi people, who take the declaration of the 1st of November as their reference. The Algerian security services revealed the details of the criminal scheme for the sexual exploitation of children through social media, which was linked to Morocco. Algerian security services reported the new details with live testimonies of those involved in case after presenting the, the accused arrested in the aftermath of the operation for the sexual exploitation of primary school children. I'm always on social media. I participate in group on Facebook. One day a man named himself Floria contacted me and appointed me as an admin of this Facebook group. When I talked to him, I thought he was Algerian. He did not tell me that he was Moroccan. I did not think that things will go this far. Tunisian President K. Saeed gave the signal to start the construction of highway linking the capital Tunis to Jelma. Saeed stressed the need to speed up the completion works and avoid the disruption witnessed by the project in a way that enables shortening the distance on the road in order to overcome the situation resulting from the previous options. Head of High Council of State Khaled al mishri announced the suspension of communication between presidencies of the State Council and House of Representatives and work of the Joint Committee after Parliament approved the law establishing a constitutional court and mishri in a letter addressed to the head of the Parliament, Aqila Saleh, indicated that the suspension would continue until the law was revoked as it does not fall with the legislative powers of House of Representatives. In the Middle East, the Zionist forces stormed the city of Nablus in the northern occupied West Bank and began besieging the old city amid an exchange of gunfire with the Palestinian resistance. Arin al usud Group, which is based in old city of Nablus, announced that it is in the highest readiness to confront any Zionist aggression. The Chinese President Xi Jinping arrived in Saudi Arabia on Wednesday as part of a three-day visit to the kingdom. The visit of Mr. Xi comes at the invitation of the King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud of Saudi Arabia. The Chinese President will attend the first China Arab State Summit and the China Gulf Cooperation Council Summit. In the European continent, Russian President Vladimir Putin said that Russia's special military operation in Ukraine could be a long process. The Russian President also denied rumors that Moscow was planning a second round of mobilization for the conflict. Nabil Khazini. More than nine months after the war began and with one year mark of the conflict approaching, the Russian President Vladimir Putin warned of prolonged Russian military operation in Ukraine, even as he stated that he does not see the need to call for another mobilization of troops. Regarding the long process of achieving the results of the special military operation, of course it can be a long process. You have mentioned gaining new territories. It's a meaningful result. After all, for Russia, it's a serious issue. Fears Russia could resort to its nuclear arsenal to achieve a military breakthrough have risen. Vladimir Putin, who has repeatedly said that Moscow was ready to use all available means to protect its territory, said Russia would only use weapons of mass destruction in response to an attack. 
Our strategy is to consider nuclear weapons, and they are weapons of mass destruction, as means of protection. It is all set up around the so-called retaliatory oncoming strike. And there in the front line, Volodymyr Zelensky traveled to the Donbass region, a new display of defiance from Kiev during the Armed Forces Day of Ukraine. Probably today this is the most difficult direction and one that protects not only the east of our country but protect our entire country. Moscow had expected fighting to last just days before Ukraine's surrender. However, the deployment of more heavy weaponry into the battlefield shows that the war hasn't said its final word. Same line of thought, the European Commission has proposed a ninth package of sanctions on Russia, including an additional almost 200 additional individuals and entities on sanctions list. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen said in a statement that the EU also proposed to introduce sanctions against three additional Russian banks and also wants to impose new export controls and restrictions, particularly for dual-use goods including key chemicals, nerve agents, electronics and IT components. Germany on Wednesday detained 25 members and supporters of a far-right group that the prosecutor's office said was preparing a violent overthrow of the state to install as national leader a prince who had sought support from Russia. Prosecutors said that group was inspired by the deep state conspiracy theories of Germany, Reichsburger and Okanon, whose advocates were among those arrested after the storming of the U.S. Capitol in January 2021. Based on current findings, the suspected terrorist group being covered today was founded based on a coup d'etat fantasies and conspiracy ideologies. Only a further investigation will give us a clear picture how far advanced those coup plans were. Militant Reichsburger are united by the hatred for democracy, for our state and for people who support our community. Peru's president was ousted from office on Wednesday after he tried to dissolve Congress and install an emergency government to rule by decree. A stunning move that political leaders across the spectrum was quick to denounce as a coup attempt. President Pedro Castillo's announcements came hours before Congress had already scheduled a vote on impeaching Mr. Castillo on corruption charges. After Mr. Castillo's speech, Congress moved up its meeting and swiftly voted to remove him as president. By late Wednesday afternoon, Mr. Castillo was under arrest and his vice president, Dina Bollard, was sworn in president, becoming the first woman to lead the country. A few hours before a new motion to impeach me, I appear before you, dear compatriots, to whom I must ratify once again that I am not corrupt. I will have to face a third vacancy motion based on the statements of third parties who, in order to reduce their sentence for the acts allegedly committed, abusing my trust, are trying to implicate me without evidence. And now for more international news, let's follow this roundup. Power may have returned on Wednesday in some households and businesses in North Carolina that have gone without it since gunfire attacks disabled the substations. It is worth noting that federal law enforcement is assisting in an investigation into the situation, which is being monitored by the White House. Clashes broke out between police and Bangladesh Nationalist Party activists on Wednesday. Police officers tried to disperse the activists gathered in front of the party's central office in the capital Dhaka. But a man died during the clashes and more than 10 people were injured, as local media reported, adding that police used rubber bullets and tear gas to disperse the protesters. Some 28 migrants fled from a plane that made an emergency landing in Barcelona on Wednesday when a pregnant woman faked going into labor during a Morocco to Turkey flight. Before police rounded up half of them, as Spain's government declared, police detained 14 people who were on plane operated by Turkey's Pegasus airline while 14 others were still missing. 
A suicide bomber blew himself up at a police station in Indonesia's West Java province early Wednesday, killing a police officer and injuring 10 others, including a civilian. West Java police said the suicider bomber charged into the police station located in a commercial area in Bandung during routine roll call with a sharp weapon before the explosion occurred. Later this month, the first of EUMITSAT's next-generation geostationary climatological satellite fleet will be launched. The METUSAT third-generation Imager 1 will provide a vastly increased amount of high-resolution data. Marobleu. Twelve years of preparation and several billion euros to scrounge up a few precious hours in predicting severe weather phenomena. Europe is preparing to launch the first of its new generation weather satellites. Wrapped in a black insulating film enabled with mirrored surfaces to reflect the heat of the sun, the 3.8-ton beast sits in the Tails Alenia Space Clean Room in Cannes before taking the boat to Kourou, from where it must be launched by the end of the year. They embark on board the satellites and we have talked about it a lot lately because it is also a great achievement from the industrial point of view of the Leonardo group. A sensor, a lightning detector which will ensure better ability to detect and estimate weather phenomena. And obviously one of the main goals is to do that as early as possible. Once in orbit at an altitude of 36,000 kilometers, MTG I-1 for Meteosat's third-generation imager will scan the planet every 10 minutes, and it should be followed by the year 2025 by a twin, which will focus on Europe at the rate of a scan every two and a half minutes and a satellite equipped with a probe which will analyze the composition of the atmosphere over its entire height. The reason why tools have been developed is clearly to provide the citizens of the different countries that we represent with much more precise information, information on the amount of rain that will fall in the next two hours, on the risk of storms, and therefore the possibility of managing their activities, but also their own lives accordingly and therefore considerably reducing the personal risks, but also the risks of the activities that these people carry out. The massive investment justified by the fact that no weather report is possible today without these space sentinels and with the exponential growth of extreme weather events, the images must be more and more precise and frequent. This is important data because today 95% of weather forecasts are made using satellite data, 40 million data processed per day. The satellites has become essential for all of us. In total, this program launched in 2010 represents a budget of 4.3 billion euros shared between ESA and EMUTSA, the organization responsible for operating these satellites for 20 years. And in football, or soccer as Americans call it, FIFA President Gianni Infantino said on Tuesday that the 2022 World Cup in Qatar had the best group stages of any World Cup tournament in history. Infantino cited the big upsets, fans, games and goals as he voiced his hope for the tournament to continue entertaining as it moves on to the quarter-final. Infantino said more than 2 billion viewers had already tuned in the tournament. With that figure, expected to rise to 5 billion viewers by the tournament's end. I've seen all matches indeed, and uh, put very simply and, and very clearly, this has been the best group stage of uh, a World Cup ever. So this is very promising for the remainder of the World Cup. Um, but uh, the matches have been of... Uh, great, great quality in uh, beautiful stadiums. We knew that uh, already. Definitely it was the best group stage ever. But to this end, ladies and gentlemen, thank you ever so much for being with us. For now, good night.